Welcome to A-Level and AP Physics. In today's lesson, we will discuss a typical type of question on standard model from May-June 2021, paper 2-1. I said this is typical type of question because this type of questions are very common in past papers. And these type of questions have been asked many times in the past. For part A, it is given to us a proton in a nucleus decays to form a neutron and a beta plus particle. Beta plus particle in fact is positron so this is antiparticle of electron and this positron is a lepton so we need to understand positron is a lepton so this belongs to lepton family for part one we need to state the name of an other lepton that is produced in the decay in this case beta plus particle is emitted so this tells us this is beta plus decay so let's try to understand first of all what is beta plus decay if beta plus particle is emitted it means this is beta plus decay if electron is emitted it means this is beta minus decay so this is beta plus decay let's say we have have one nucleus x atomic number of this one is z and this nucleus decays to an other nucleus by beta plus decay so by beta plus decay so this is our beta plus particle so you can also write down it has charge plus one and it has mass number zero so in this case we can simply write down the z this will be z minus one because this is plus one and this has to be a mass number will not change and other particle is emitted so beta plus particle this is antiparticle so in this case electron neutrino will be emitted so electron neutrino neutrino has no mass number and also no atomic number so simply we can write down here so this is electron neutrino so the way to remember this one is look at this particle so if this is antiparticle we can simply write down if this is antiparticle means if this is positron that is antiparticle of electron this one has to be particle means this has to be neutrino so this one has to be particle and vice versa is also true if this is particle means if this is electron this one has to be antiparticle means electron and neutrino so this is the point you need to understand particle and antiparticle this is due to lepton number I means the lepton number has to be conserved that's the reason one has to be particle other one has to be antiparticle because lepton has a lepton number plus one and anti-lepton has a lepton number of minus one so that's the reason one has to be particle other one has to be anti-particle to conserve lepton number so for the answer of this question simply you need to write down electron neutrino so we can write down electron neutrino electron neutrino and this question has one mark and that is b mark so it has to be in your answer if you only write down neutrino still you will get one mark but the proper way of writing is electron neutrino because there are different types of neutrinos electron neutrino muon neutrinos and tau neutrino so this is electron neutrino so the proper way of writing is electron neutrino but in order to get marks if you only write down neutrino still you will get one mark for the second part, we need to state the name of interaction that gives rise to this decay. This is typical type of question. And for this one, we need to understand when quark change from one flavor to another flavor, or simply we can say when quark change from one type to an other type, or simply we can say when the down quark, it change into up quark, or vice versa is also true, if up quark change into down quark, or any other type of quark, when it change from one form to an other form, the interaction, the force responsible for that, that is weak nuclear force so simply answer for this question you need to write down weak nuclear force and weak nuclear force is also responsible for fusion process in the sun so weak nuclear force when quark change from one form to another form force responsible is 
weak nuclear force. Nuclear fusion process is taking place in sun. So the force responsible for that nuclear fusion is also weak nuclear force. Because when protons, they combine together, they form helium nucleus. And in helium, we also have neutrons. So protons change into neutrons. So the quark is again means change from one form into another form. So weak nuclear force is also responsible for that. So this is what we need to understand. This question has only one mark and that is B mark. So it has to be in the answer. This is what you need to write down. You can write down weak nuclear force. You can write down weak nuclear interaction. And this force, weak nuclear force, it has the shortest range. And the range of this force is about 10 to negative 18 meters. Even this range is shorter than strong nuclear force. Let's move on to next part. For the next part, question is asking us state which of the three particles, proton, neutron, and beta plus particle has the largest ratio of charge to mass simply is asking us q by m which one has greatest ratio of q by m first of all let's look at proton for proton the charge on proton 1.6 times 10 to negative 19 coulombs and the mass of one proton is about 1.66 times 10 to negative 27 kg so this is q over m far proton so we can say this is far proton and for neutron so we can write down here q over m for neutron neutron has no charge so this is zero and the mass of neutron is about 1.67 times 10 to negative 27 kgs. We can also do the same for beta plus particle. For beta plus particle, the charge on beta plus particle is the same as the charge on single electron. Or we can say as the charge on single proton. So this is 1.6 times 10 to negative 19 coulombs. So we can write on here. And the mass of beta plus particle, it is the same same mass as mass of single electron and the mass of single electron is 9.11 times 10 to negative 31 kgs now simply we need to compare them so q m for neutron this will be equal to zero because there is no charge but now we need to compare proton with beta plus so you can see they have the same charge but the mass of proton is greater than the mass of beta plus so it means this number is small but this is the same for proton same for beta plus so it means q over m for beta plus is higher than q over m for proton so simply we can write down our answer is beta plus particle so it has higher q over m ratio so the answer is beta plus particle and this question has B1 mark means that only one B mark and this has to be in your answer for the next part, we need to use the quark model to show that the charge on the proton is plus E. Where e is the elementary charge? First of all, let's try to understand what is quark composition of proton. Proton consists of two up quarks and one down quark. The charge on one up quark is plus 2 by 3 E. And the charge on one down quark, this is minus 1 over 3 e now simply we need to add these charges together so the charge on one up quark this is 2 by 3 e we have two up quarks so we can write down this two times and we need to add the charge on down quark and the charge on down quark is minus 1 over 3 e now simply we can add these two so plus 2 by 3 e plus 2 by 3 e so simply we can say this is plus 4 by 3e minus we have 1 over 3e now simply we need to add we can take lcm so this will be 4 minus 1 times e so if we simplify this one our final answer will be plus e so the charge on single proton is equal to plus e this question has two marks and the first is uh, if we have written the quark composition for proton we will get one mark and this is b mark i mean it has to be in your answer and the last one is this is also b mark if we have shown that our final answer means the charge on the proton is plus e you will get the second mark
To find part 5, we need to describe the change to the quark composition. But for this question, it is given to us proton changes to neutron. So simply we can write down, first of all, proton, proton changes to neutron. So we can simply write down here, proton changes to neutron. Now we need to write down the change in quark composition. Proton consists of two up quarks, one down quark. But neutron, it consists of one up quark and two down quark. So this is the change, means two up quark and down quark changes into one up quark and two down quark. Or uh, simply we can say in this case one up quark changes into one down quark. So that's all what you need to write down for this question. And this question has one mark. If you have written this one, you will get one mark. Means if you have written up up down quark changes to up down down quark, you will get this one mark. For part B, it is given to us a nucleus X. The proton number is 6, our atomic number is 6, and mass number is 12. And the nucleus Y. Mass number is 16, and proton number is 8, or we can simply say atomic number is 8. Are accelerated by the same uniform electric field. We need to determine the ratio between the electric force acting on nucleus X and electric force acting on nucleus Y. First of all, let's try to understand what this is telling us. If you look at nucleus X, so it has atomic number 6 and the mass number is 12. And so the charge on this one means the charge on X, this is equal to its atomic number. So simply we can say this is 6e plus, means 6 times the charge on single proton. Now if we look at nucleus Y, for nucleus Y, proton number is 8, meaning atomic number is 8, and the mass number is 16. So the charge on this particle is equal to 8 times the charge on single proton. These two, they are accelerated through the same electric field, and the field is uniform. Same uniform form electric field. So we can place these two nuclei in this electric field. So we can assume we have nucleus X here. So it has atomic number 6. Its mass number is 12. And we have another nucleus Y. Its atomic number is 8. Its mass number is 16. They are accelerated in this uniform electric field. So as it is uniform electric field, it means E is same everywhere in this field. We can simply say E is same. Now we need to find the ratio. So we simply, we can write down the ratio. This is the force of on x divided by the force on y. Then the electric force is equal to E times Q. So we can say this is EQX and this will be EQ. Y. E is the same, so we can simply cancel E with E, so we left with QX. And the QX, we can write down, this is 6E plus 8E plus. Now, if we simplify, so E plus E plus, we can cancel, so our final answer will be 0 0.75. And this is the final answer, what we need to find out. This question has two marks. The first mark is, if we have used, we have used this equation, so you will get C one mark. And the second mark is the answer mark. If you have got the right answer, you will get two marks for this question. For part two, we need to determine the ratio between acceleration of nucleus X and acceleration of nucleus Y. So they are still in the same uniform electric field. So this is given to us. They are in the same uniform electric field. So let me redraw. So this is uniform electric field. This plate is negative plate. So this is negative plate and one plate is positive. So the electric field between these two plates is uniform electric field. Means value of E is same everywhere. So they are accelerated in this uniform electric field. So we can say this is nucleus X and this is nucleus Y. Now we need to find the ratio between the acceleration. So simply we can start from here. So the ratio you need to find between AX by AY. And acceleration is equal equal to force divided by mass. So this will be the force on X divided by mass of X. 
and we need to divide this one by acceleration of y so this will be the force on y divided by the mass of y now we can simplify this and we can write down this will be force on x times the mass of y nucleus divided by this will be the force on y nucleus times the mass of nucleus x we can further simplify we can see that electric force is equal to eq so we can replace with f with e times qx and here we have mass of y and same we can do for y fy f is equal to e times the charge on y times the mass of x now from here we can simply cancel e because e is the same they are in the same uniformity field, so we can cancel this so we left with this is qx divided by qy the ratio between these two and times the ratio between mass of y and mass of x now we have already found the ratio between qx and qy that was equal to 0.75 so simply we can write down 0.75 now we need to find out the mass of y and the mass of x mass of y this is equal to 16 u the mass of y this is equal to 16 u but 1 u is equal to 1.66 times 10 to negative 27 kgs you don't need to write on in form of kgs but if you want to write on you can do that part as well and the mass of x mass of x is 12 u so simply we can plug in these values here so the mass of y is 16 u and the mass of x is 12 u so simply u u we can cancel or you can plug in values in terms of kgs you can write down you can say this is 0 0.75 this is multiplied 16 times 1.6 if you're a little confused with u so you can just write down in terms of kgs and this is divided by 12 times 1.6 times 10 to negative 27 kgs now we can cancel out so 1.6 times 10 to 27 we can cancel so we left with 0 0.75 this is multiplied with 16 divided by 12 so if we solve this one our final answer is going to be 1.0 and this is the ratio between acceleration of x and acceleration of y this question has only one mark if you got the right answer you will get that mark i have explained in detail but because sometimes some students they are confused with little little points so i have explained you in detail so you have clear picture of this question for this question it is given to us nucleus x is at rest in the uniform electric field at time t is equal to zero the field causes nucleus x to accelerate on figure 6.1 we need to sketch the variation with time t of the acceleration a of nucleus x due to the field first of all let's try to understand uniform electric field in uniform electric field so let's say this plate is positive we can simply imagine this plate is positive and this plate is negative and the electric field between these two plates will be uniform electric field as we have discussed before e is the same everywhere in this field so that's the reason we call this is uniform electric field now for this question it is given to us a nucleus x is placed in inside this one then this nucleus x has positive charge so it will accelerate in this direction now we need to find out how a will change with time if you look at this nucleus x and if we need to calculate its acceleration so that will be simply equal to the resultant force on nucleus x divided by the mass of nucleus x so the net force acting on this particle is only electric force so we have written eq over m now if we look at e e is the same because electric field is uniform q is the same because the charge on particle is not changing m is the same so m is not changing so it simply means that x has uniform acceleration acceleration is constant it will not with time so simply we can draw the horizontal line mean the acceleration of particle x is constant so that's all what you need to do if you draw this horizontal line you will get one mark